astronaut training is um, it's amazing. We, um, as ASCANs, you know, we start and we start learning about the International Space Station. We learn robotics. We learn to fly the T-38 jets. We learn to do an EVA. And so even beyond that, once we're um, past as astronaut candidacy, we go on to do analog missions where you can live underwater for nine days or two weeks, or you can live in a cave for five days. Um, so all the analog studies that we do um, kind of simulate what we're doing here in space right now. And even the National Outdoor Leadership School classes that we do, where we're either camping in, the, in Utah or in Wyoming, or we're uh, whitewater rafting in Alaska, all of these things te teaches us how to work together in a group as a team and to learn self-care and team care at the same time. So a lot of the training that we do, all of it contributes and it's led us here right now. Well, there's many, many different experiments that'll come along through um, our uh, increment. And so, you know, right now we're configuring the station for our crew and um, we're helping the next crew, the crew that was here um, configure to go home. So right now um, we're doing a lot of taking things out of the dragon that brought us up here and helping to reconfigure the um, vehicle that was here already, the dragon vehicle. And in the future, we're gonna do things like some cell biology studies, some stuff with the um, microscope here in the Japanese exploration module, and many different things on top of that. Well, that's a great question. We've been here a day and a half, and most of it has been just adapting, acclimating to the space environment. When, you know, once we hit zero G, the first thing that happens, you know, as Dr. Barrett stated to us, was that we'll get this fluid shift and we'll get a puffy face. And then after about two weeks, we kind of acclimatize to that. So even with that happening, it's still amazing to be in space and float and try to <laughs> learn how to float <laughs> properly without knocking things over and snagging wires. So it's been fun and it's been, a, you know, a little bit of interesting time adapting. Well, as a kid, you know, I never thought that I would ever get selected to become an astronaut, but um, I chose to become an aerospace engineer at the age of nine, not realizing that that one thought at the age of nine would lead me to become an aerospace engineer. And, you know, once, um, once I finished school, I went on to work at the Ford Motor Company and for the government, and it was through those jobs that le led me to apply, partly because, you know, I learned to be deeply technical, but working for the government, I learned a little bit more about being operational. And when I tell students that, they always ask, what does that mean? Well, as a, as a scientist or a, an engineer scientist, I could probably help design and develop anything that flies, but I, I may not be able to fly it. But as an operator, you can fly it, but you may or may not be able to design it. So having those two talents come together is, to me, was what I thought made a great astronaut. If you can be deeply technical and operational at the same time, and being here on station, I could see where all of that is applicable. So eventually, after having worked for the government for seven years, um, I figured that, okay, well, maybe it's time that I apply. And, you know, even though I knew many people who were awesome and great who were applying and they didn't get in, I figured that, you know, that may have been my last chance to apply. So I, I went ahead and applied. And here I am. Okay, so this week we don't have so we didn't have a lot on our schedule as far as experiments we had a lot of configuration for the station itself but in the next few weeks we'll probably have um, some uh, plant studies some cell biology studies material science studies um, and a lot on our own body so we'll I'll start doing some um, blood draws on myself and taking saliva samples and looking at how that changes over the six months Well, 
a lot of the stuff that we do, we do on behalf of other research scientists and institutes. So we're basically the hands and the eyes of all these scientists. And at University of Maryland, one of the big things that I was taught was how to make my own um, specimens, samples, and models. So making my own models, you have to learn a ton of different skills. You have to learn how to lay up the composites. You have to learn how to put, um, place a strain gauge on it and wire it properly. Then you have to learn how to do the analytical um, side of testing whatever specimen you have. So here, all the setup work that we do is the same thing that I was doing when I was building my own models and um, honing and sharpening those models, redoing it when something went wrong and rebuilding it. And so here, a lot of the stuff that we do is set up for the research scientists uh, back on Earth. But having the uh, research background can give you a better sense of how things should be because the scientists on the ground, they have one idea in mind, but you know, as we're putting it together, understanding that will help this experiment go better and better.